Hey, John, good morning. This is uh, Evan Hunter to Manny. Hey, when you get a chance, could you um, hit me up, man? I would like to talk to you. All right, take care. Bye. Welcome once again to AIW's The Card is Going to Change. We want to thank you for joining us here on this podcast. Uh, we, we sit down with owners John Thorne and Chandler Biggins from AIW, and today we will be discussing... This is owner to Chandler! <laughs> we will be discussing uh, Double Dare, the two-day tag team tournament again. This is episode part two for Double Dare, and before we really dive into it, and the voicemail that you heard. We would like to, uh, of course, thank our sponsors part of the show. We are being fed today, as always, by Angelo's Pizza. Check out award-winning Angelo's Pizza in Lakewood on Madison Avenue. Also being sponsored by Smart Mark Video. Ange- well, I, let me go back. Yo. Angelo's, Tom Hanks' favorite pizza. It is Tom Hanks' favorite pizza. They Absolutely. Also, they also sent us some good veal plates tonight for the for the recording. So. Mm. Oh, oh, because we're not getting any at Ethan Page's wedding last year. <laughs> that motherfucker. That podcast has been fucking disbanded. <laughs> Well, we also want to thank Smart Mark Ethan Video. Page went for your next wedding. I got a good spot for you to get some veal. <laughs> Our sponsor, they'll hook you up. They hook us up. I'm enjoying this fucking spaghetti and veal right now. I have a broccoli pizza. All their food's delicious. I got a little chicken, par- fucking winning, chicken man. parmesan right here, baby. What do you think fucking Tom Hanks was dreaming about on that island for five years? Tom Hanks, probably Angelo's Pizza. Angelo's he loves Pizza, it. number one. He loves it. <laughs> number one. Oh, you went right your shit there, dude. <laughs> you did. Number one, uh, Angelo's <laughs> Pizza make you humble. So as I've said multiple times, we also want to thank Smart Mark Video. Uh, they do record every AIW event that we have. Uh, Mike Burns. Out. Yeah. Mike Robles. Gary. Hey, Shannon. Avid listeners of the podcast. Scumbag for hire Andy. <laughs> Avid listener. I don't know. I, he's more of a car salesman now. I don't know if yeah, he's out of the biz. Huh? Yeah, Nissan. Check him out at that Nissan in Pennsylvania. At four, right at Route 422. <laughs> they love AIW. AIW loves them. Limerick, uh, Pennsylvania. Limerick, <laughs> yeah. Check them out for uh, any past AIW show as well as others. You get MP4. We got to get that. We got to get that. Che- we got to get that check up, man. Buy DVDs. And then, uh, of course, we are also sponsored by Jack Prince for all your logo, sign, apparel, banner, any sort of needs that you have. In if the you literally world. go to their website, they probably manufacture at probably at least over a thousand different items. What is that website, Chandler Biggins? J A K Prince dot com. And don't forget to use coupon code Jack Welcome eighty eight to save up to seventy five dollars. They're just giving everything away. It's a beauty. I'm going to make something. Steve Guy, you should come out with your own line of thong underwear. <laughs> what, what we, you once, we once paid uh, Corey Graves in custom SJK thongs. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a true story. <laughs> we, were, we were really set up with this printer guy. And, you know, we were trying to pay people in merch because we didn't have any money. And we paid him in custom SJK thongs. For him to give away to his SJK girls on his website. All right, before we get too far off the rails, since this has already become a two-part episode, this is where you're. This is why you're here. Yeah, man. that's why I'm here. We don't yeah, want to. Sanding fans, would you ask where, why Steve Guy's here? This is exactly why. We don't need to roll this into a three-part episode. Shout out to Sean Jondis too for his uh, tattoos. Ta- his tattoo sponsorship. I don't have the flyer in front of me. Yeah, that's kind of like if you come to the shows, we'll give you a flyer for him. Yeah, and shout get, out to him. Great yeah, hey, very he's going to be a father soon. Congrats to him and Rose. That's right. Look, look, you know, look for uh, look for the flyers at the AW events, and you could save a substantial discount on your body art. Sean Jondas, the original Steve and, Guy guy. Yeah, and he could do uh, glow in the dark ink now. He says <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he was talking to me about doing like a Ric Flair tattoo on me where it glows in the dark and it bleeds. I said, whatever, man. He also told me he would pay me to get have tattoos, but I can't have tattoos. Why not? I'm a businessman. <laughs> All right. Well, we left off uh, part one of Double Dare. We set the scene, everything leading Sorry, up to man, Double I was Dare. Just feeling real emotional. It's last okay. Week. We talked a little bit about the the after parties, uh, DJ Z DJing at, at one of them at Mahal's. Uh, so DJ now, Gary. <laughs> DJ Gary, and DJ Gary, we left into. Uh, Which, by the, the way, Gary. Loved us because the hotel had a free buffet. 
Oh, there you go. We'll get well in a buffet talk under this episode. <laughs> oh, boy. That's right. So we set the scene. We talked about it, match. Uh, somebody got arrested day one of Double Dare. We didn't even know if they were going to make it. Now, we also had told you that Devastation Corporation was injured. So during the match of Crime Time, before Crime Time even came out, DCR, Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham, and Brian Carson come out. They say they're here to replace somebody, and everybody starts shouting, we know they got arrested. As you have learned from last episode, Devastation Corporation did not, in fact, get arrested. They were injured. So who got arrested? Uh, Headhunter A, or also known as Headhunter 1. Headhunter 1, Headhunter 2. Headhunter 1, Headhunter Headhunter A. Uh, I get this, so I get this phone call. And this is what prompted, since you said Headhunter 1, I just want to throw this out here because you have a voicemail from Headhunter 2. Correct, Headhunter <laughs> 2. Manny. Uh, I, get a, I, I get this call, and I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, because s- these guys throughout the process, I think, you know, I we went back. I think we started negotiating with these guys in sep- early September. Uh, once we decided that we yeah, because I would think August is when we decided to do a tag tournament, so. like late August, so late August, early September. And uh, Brett Lauderdale actually kind of uh, hooked it up for us to find them because Game Changer before I think it was called Game Changer booked them when it was like Jersey Championship Wrestling or whatever, and like I. Somehow knew that, or you know, people. Well, because we had talked about us and Drew Cordero were all talking about we need to book these guys. Probably whenever they booked them, like I think it was like three years ago. Right. So like I got a hold of Lauderdale, and Lauderdale kind of like murder, point- death, kill. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think he does the murder, death, and killing. I think he's the the liaison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that one guy's name? Dewey Donovan. He's like the new Dewey Donovan. <laughs> Yeah, Price Dewey Donovan. That guy's still around, man. Brett Lauderdale's the new Dewey Donovan. Yeah, he, uh, he manages Nate Hatred in Game Changer now. So I get a hold of uh, Brett Lauderdale, and he kind of uh, he talks to Danny DeMonto, and like you know, they get me the contact for the Headhunters, and uh, I start this negotiation process, which was uh, like un unbelievable. You know, I know I know we're kind of getting off track a little bit, but. Just negotiating with these guys, like, I mean... So there's probably a reason why they don't get out as much as they used to. Victor Kionis taught these guys well, man. I'll tell you, these guys <laughs> are fucking steep negotiators. Uh, for, you know, we wanted to book them just because, like, you know, that's like the that's the fucking Japanese wrestling that I remember. Like, is them fucking flipping through fucking glass? The fucking mushroom boys, dude. And Stu, what, what's Strangle Mania? What were their names? Sweeten House uh, and Sweden Ponderosa. House, yeah, Ponderosa. Sweet, Sweeten House and Ponderosa. You know, glass for your fat ass. Like, uh, these are my formidable years as like a fourteen year old. What you know? So these guys have a special place in my heart. Shout out to Suncoast Video where I bought all those tapes. Uh, Laredo Kid loves Suncoast video. He does. He might still be there. <laughs> I wish he was still there. <laughs> um, so, you know, I start, you know, I, I start this negotiation process with them, and it's like, you know, they hit me with like, it's like fucking at 1993 Japan prices, and I'm just like, dude, like relax, like I, like the economy is not 1993 Japan. Let me tell you, yeah, the yen is not that high anymore, brother. So, uh, you know, we start negotiating, and it's just like, you know, like, I'm just like, hey, I can do it for this, and like, how about this? Send me money in the mail. Well, they didn't, get, they didn't really get the mail, but uh, so then I got Headhunter 2 calling me and going, what's up? You know, what's up? I heard you can't get the negotiations right with my brother, and like, they're arguing with me, and like, then I hang up with him, and then the other one calls me. Uh, so, you know, we finally you just get like a three way call going. Yeah. So we finally agree on a price and I work it out and it's just like, you know, yeah, I'm going to fly you guys and get you a hotel and all that. Literally two days later, phone call. We're going to need deposits. I said, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> like, I'm not giving you guys. The- what? I'm what? not. I am not wearing money to fucking Ponderosa uh, at the fucking bank. Unless it was the steakhouse Ponderosa. So then it's just like. Uh, no, we need a deposit. We need a deposit. I was like, hey, listen, I'm not doing a deposit. I fucking I, I I gave up on the deposit game when fucking Vader asked for money in a Maxim magazine. I said I'm not gonna do a deposit. So then they're off the ship. Which I'm glad I saved those Maxim magazines because they're a hot seller on eBay currently. Yeah, 
the fucking eBay store is on fire with the Maxims and the ninety nine F- and the FHMs. But uh, so then this is literally a true story. So then they're off the show because I refused the deposit. Yeah, because you were you, at one point you were like, oh fuck the hell, like, we're done. I was like, fuck it, you know, like I'm not sending these guys a headhunters. Like a, a deposit, like one calls me, then I hang up, then the other one calls me. It was like so, like it was unreal, and I fucking hate phone calls. So then, literally, after, like, we're talking on Facebook chat, negotiations have ended. We start looking elsewhere. I get a, I get an instant message from Headhunter, uh, Headhunter B, Manny. Uh, this is like an algebra thing, trying to keep these guys <laughs> together. A, B, one, one two. two. And he goes, oh, you guys booked Laredo Kid? He's great. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> Laredo to the rescue. Yeah, like... It all comes back to Laredo Kid. So, uh, literally, because they went and looked at our Facebook or our website or something, they go, oh, like, you book Laredo Kid? We're in. No deposit. We trust you. <laughs> uh, so, they're in, and then as soon then they just, they continue to call me over the weeks leading up to Double Dare, wanting to know where their flights are, wanting to know their hotel information, and it's just like, you're got, don't worry. Like, Which both of those are literally an independent wrestling, a last-minute thing. Right. Yeah, like, you know, like you, you, like we were saying last week, you got to build the bank up a little bit, you know what I mean? And, like, if we have five shows, all five shows are going to have fly-ins, so, like, we do one at a time and then keep building off of that. Yeah, unless you want to donate to our Patreon account, and then we can really fucking get or more organized. Or go to shop.aiwrestling.com, smartmarkvideo.com, or my secret eBay store that Thorn will send you via Twitter. Yeah, uh, that's th- these are our money fundraising uh, avenues. So anyway, you know, they're in, whatever. Uh, I finally get them to stop calling me every day. Yeah, they went to about every, what, three days? Yeah, and then, you know, leading up to it, it's just like, like I said... Last week, I'm trying to figure out how to edit the podcast. It's fucking 5 in the morning. I start watching Passenger 57 on Crackle because it's free, and I go, this is a great film that I haven't seen in several years. This is really going to take the edge off. It was like Passenger 57 or drink at 5 o'clock in the morning, so I went with Passenger 57 to kind of take the edge off. And then my phone... I'm awake the whole time in my house with him just telling me, oh, my God, we're fucked. Yeah, this podcast is not going well. The podcast is bad. The headhunters may or may not come. Well, like I'm, get, I'm getting to that. Like, so I get this voicemail that I that opens up the episode, and I call them back because I go, you know, who knows with these guys? Like, maybe they don't know how to like check in on. Sean, we want you to buy our coffee at the airport. <laughs> you know, this isn't like you know these guys were running hot in the '90s when you had physical tickets, but who knows right. if they know if they're if they're hip to this, you know, to this online tickets. e-tickets and online check-ins because I had several. Phone calls about the, I don't see my name on the e-ticket, even though, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, They thought we only bought them one airline ticket because it said the last name on both tickets. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are identical twin brothers. Right. Uh, so there is wood for one, but not for two. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, great. You know, these guys are at the airport. They can't fucking figure it out. So they weren't I, at the airport. I'm, I'm, pulling up, I'm pulling up their flight information to have it all up on my computer so I could call them back and I can read it all to him. And uh, I call him and he goes, John, we got a problem, brother. (laughs) And I go, oh, shit. He goes, my brother, he went to jail today. (laughs) And I go, "Uh, what? He goes, but listen, I called American Airlines. I got him to change the flights. He goes, and that's not my brother because he's a fuck up. And he fucking, he fucked this up. So Headhunter 2 throwing Headhunter 1 under yeah, the bus. They throw each other under the bus. He man. goes, my brother's a fuck up, and we are professionals, John. We are professionals. <laughs> we are not going to fuck you over. The Headhunters are professionals, and we are going to make that show. Because I called American Airlines, got the flights changed. My brother's going to pay me that fucking money. As soon as he gets out, he goes, jail opens up at 8 a.m. I got the bail money. I got... I got I got the money he's got to pay. He goes, I'm going to go there, and he's going to fucking pay me back for that too. And he goes, I'm going to get him out. We're going to go to the airport. We're going to make that show. But he goes, I don't know what time we're going to make that show, but we're going to make that show. And I go, uh, all right. I mean. Uh, Nothing we can do at this point. Shot, like, it was hard dealing with these guys up until this point, but when jail's in the mix, they were surprisingly like on top of the They're fucking game. <laughs> they were on the ball like, 
they had already before they had even called to tell me about the arrest. They had already changed the plane <laughs> tickets, had, had the bail money ready had to go, the, had, hit the ATM, had the cash ready to go. Uh, call, you know, figured out the time the you know the jail opened. He had it, he had it all figured out. So I was like, fuck. All right, you know, like these guys, like I usually get scared in these situations. Like, you know, when uh, when Colin Delaney texts me, you know, a, a picture somehow of him handcuffed in the backseat of a police car, I go. Eh, this guy ain't gonna fucking figure this out today, you know. Like, like <laughs> right. this is what, what kind of lack security is there in Tennessee? Yeah, so yeah. sends the picture. But too. surprisingly, when the headhunters call me and tell me that one is in jail when they were supposed to be going to the airport, and they said that they had it figured out, I trusted that they fucking had it figured out. So they are professionals. They are fucking professionals, and uh, so I'm like, fuck. All right, I call I call Biggins because I know he's awake, and I go, hey man. I don't know what's going to happen, but these guys say that one is in jail. And uh, I'm like doing the math and I'm looking at the fucking flights and I'm going to go, fuck, man, this is kind of a long flight. You know, they're coming from Houston, Texas. Uh, <laughs> so I I don't I don't know if they're going to make it. But I think both of us were just so done at that point. We're like, hey, if they make it good, if not, eh, whatever. So like we're trying to come up with fucking like uh, backup plans throughout the day. Because I think we had. We had PB Smooth and Gary the King Baller. We had Hope and Change. Yeah, we. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like we had, we had somebody like ready to go. Gary from F- Smart Mark Video was like really trying to get me out of retirement. I said, Gary, <laughs> I don't fucking, I don't think anyone wants the fucking pay to see. Wow, that. he's making noises like DJ Z, because yeah. he's a DJ. Yes. So I'm trying to think. Like we had. We had somebody like that was there, and it's just like, hey, like, be ready to go. Uh, and yeah, I can't remember. It sounds familiar though. And like, you know, so oh, I think it was gonna. I think we we're gonna change up the card, and it was gonna be. It was gonna have to end up being Greg and Veda, and we were gonna switch up the the first round matchups. Um, so we don't really know what is going on. Um, doors are open. And I have not heard from the headhunters since five o'clock. Because I remember I kept asking you, like, have you heard from the headhunters? And, and I'm like, like no. texting them and like hitting them up on Facebook chats and like, you know, nothing, nothing like dead silence. And these guys were guy- phone callers. So I'm like, fuck, you know, something went wrong. You know, uh, I get a I get a phone call at like 730 p.m. Because this is kind of why, you know. Doors also had to open up late because we had no idea. Well, it was just was one of those days where stuff was just running slow and behind. Yeah. Like there's a problem at the one hotel we had, so I had to go there. For, I was at the venue, had to go all the way across town to the hotel, worry about that, and then come back. And I think I showed up like ten minutes before doors were supposed to open, and then I had to fight off all the referees because they wanted to line up because they so they could figure out what. Who gets what matches and everything? Well, I also need to get everybody's. <laughs> well, you're a ring announcer. You weren't trying to fight me, but the refs, <laughs> yeah. the refs love to fight each other and get. So, and somehow I think we had throughout the cast we had lost the lineups. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Phys- yeah, there were no the, physical. The physical. We couldn't find physical the physical lineups. lineups. Yeah. So for all we knew, they were sitting in the fucking bleacher somewhere. And someone had full fucking lineups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert. But uh, so. Like seven thirty or seven forty five, my phone rings and it's the fucking headhunters. And I go, okay, here we go. This has got to be some bad news. And he goes, John, this is uh, head headhunter two. I I would like to put you on the phone with headhunter uh, headhunter one, headhunter A. And he goes, hey John, this is headhunter A. I just want to apologize for fucking things up. Uh, you know, anything I could do to make it up for you. I, I'm a very professional. This usually doesn't happen to me. I'll explain, you know, it's a misunderstanding. You know, I was arrested and, uh, you know, I just, you know, I, I hope, you know, you know, this reflects poorly on me, but you don't take it out on my brother, you know, this and that. And I go, okay, yeah, man, no problem, no problem. And he goes, okay, I'm going to put you back on with Headhunter 2, uh, Headhunter B. And I go, oh, hey, what's up, Headhunter B? And he goes, hey, John. We're in North Carolina. We land at 9.45 p.m. In Cleveland. And, and meanwhile, the show is just blowing through. Oh, yeah. Well, like, we we had kind of prevented it from starting. Like, we had opened doors, but I don't think we started yet. Uh, when they officially said they're in North Carolina, and they told me their flight lands at 9.45 p.m. So we're like, fuck. We definitely got to fucking stretch. And, like, 
usually that's easy because like we have like nine to ten matches, but this was just a straight eight fucking you know just just the tournament matches. So I'm like, okay, fuck. Uh, which, mind you, like before we even get to this, um, I meet up with little Guido and Lucky at the bar because they landed at Lucky ten a.m. Right? Lucky thirteen, and Lucky thirteen thought he could go yeah. whiskey. For beer with little Guido at ten in the say, morning. This whole thing with the headhunters actually worked out in Lucky Thirteen's favor. Right. So I I go and meet Guido because I I don't think anybody could go beer to beer with Guido, much less right. hard liquor. Like liquor to beer with Guido. So I go and meet Guido. It's l- honestly like ten thirty in the morning. You know, I I I decide that. Hey John, how's it going? Come have a beer. Yeah, <laughs> that's your little Guido. <laughs> yeah. It's- Hey, Guido. John, how you doing? It's, uh, it's Guido. Yeah, come on. Let's go have a beer. So, it's, so, like, I basically slept for, like, two hours, and I was just like, fuck it, man. Uh, you know, this is probably actually why I went to sleep in the fucking lawn of the hotel. Yeah. Uh, Callback. From a few episodes. The yard ago. of the hotel. Right. So, uh, so I go and I meet up with little Guido because I'm just like, fuck, you know, I'm either going to fall asleep and be dead or I got to rally. So I'm going to go hang out with Guido because he's fucking the best dude on the planet. So, Meanwhile, worldwide was at rallies. Oh yeah, he probably was at rallies, the fucking fast food restaurant, getting in shape. Uh, so I I go to this bar. Little Guido loves this like little bar that used to be a strip club where you used to get a ten dollar you could get a ten dollar handy in there. Now it's like trying to be fucking rebranded as a real bar. And no matter what incarnation it is, Little Guido just goes there, even if his hotel <laughs> even if his hotel is not there. It it is on the corner of he found a place he likes it. It's on the corner of West 150th at Brook Park Road. I can't even think of what it's called. I know I'm th- out. Fast break. Fast break. I think it's out. got lunch I think, break. I think it's got a new name now. Little Little Guido had a full sponsorship lined up that I just remembered that we should probably follow up on. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but uh, so I get in there and it's Lucky Thirteen and Little Guido and Lucky Thirteen is drinking like uh, Jack Honey's like. Just like on the rocks, and Guido is drinking Bud Heavies, and like Guido's like, yeah, you know, have a beer, have a beer. So like, I have a beer, and like, uh, this turns out to be like a 10 a.m. to like 3 p.m. thing because there was literally nothing to do all day long, and we couldn't get into the venue until 4 p.m. that day because uh, call back to Icky Bond drunk episode. They they did have school in session uh, <laughs> and no naps. Yeah, so I end up, you know, I'm just. You know, kind of casually drinking with Guido. Lucky 13 is fucked up. Like, he's the only person I ever saw go out to one of those stands selling unlicensed uh, sports merchandise. And this fucking guy, Lucky 13, cleaned out the stand uh, of of Cleveland Indians merchandise because it was on sale because they lost the World Series. So this guy's going... Man, who's who's fucking uh, who's this guy? He's buying like the fucking shirts, jerseys. You know what I mean? He's like, fuck, he's like Napoli. Who the fuck is Napoli? He goes like, fuck it, I bought it. He, this, th- I don't know how much money this guy spent on Indian stuff, but he was like, he was super into buying Indian stuff. I don't even think he likes fucking sports. So he is fucked up. And uh, which is funny because he is in a tag team called the Nation of Intoxication. Right. Well, then like. Him and Guido are drunk, and they they somehow pull like they meet the owner, and some guy recognizes Nunzio in this bar of literally five patrons on a Friday afternoon <laughs> at like one p.m. At this With point, a pallet of Napoli merchandise in the corner. Yeah. Somebody recognizes fucking Nunzio from fucking the cruiserweight division, and, and like then the bartenders start marking out and like start looking him up on Wikipedia, and then the owner's in there and he's giving me his card and Guido. Such a businessman. This is the promoter right here. This is the boss right here. You know, uh, bring him over. You know, he's fucking like honestly. If I wish little Guido just lived here, and I would just take him fucking from business to business. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta get him on the podcast. So like, you know, he is selling the sponsorship to this fucking bar that he loves that has like nobody in there. He just uh, wants a free tab. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't even think he wants a free tab because I think he really appreciates fucking uh, oh. spending money on booze. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, so. Anyway, little little Guido's fucking ordering chicken tenders and fucking, you know, like drinking beers and Lucky 13 is fucking hammered and we go to the venue and the car ride from the venue until, you know, from the bar to the venue, Lucky 13 hits like another level of drunk that I've never seen in my life. Can't even speak like <laughs> and he's supposed to the main event with Eric Ryan against the headhunters who may or may not show up because they're in jail. 
Uh, and uh, somebody had to go through all this barbed wire that we prepared. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, Lucky Thirteen gets to the venue and uh, really quickly tries to do a couple springboards in the ring, which he could barely stand up. That doesn't turn out too well. Uh, I think he was trying to get the blood flowing and sober up. That didn't work. So then about 15 minutes later, after we got to the venue and his springboards failed, he I saw him laying on a towel yeah. in the, in the so locker room, to totally passed out, and he did not move for probably six to seven hours. Yeah, he didn't wake up until uh, maybe 15 minutes before the headhunters got there. He got geared up, and he fucking was <laughs> on point. So, so, yeah, he's sleeping. The headhunters say that they're going to land at 945. So I'm like, fuck, you know, we got to stretch some shit out. Like, let's start the show later. We took like a fucking really long intermission. Uh, but those fucking guys showed up, paint, painted up and everything. They painted up in the fucking car or on the plane. I'm not sure. They might have painted up on the plane, honestly. But they showed up in gear. How do you go through TSA to paint it up? Dude, I wondered that myself. Uh, because we sent one of our newer students, Josh, who was like a 19 year old, like nervous kid to pick up the headhunters. And like, he was just like, they came out with the face paint on. <laughs> they were ready to rock and roll, man. But I mean, we could, we could fucking circle back to the headhunters and just kind of dive into like the rest of everything that kind of happened on the show. Yeah. I mean, so the rest of the show, we do have crime time. They do end up having the match that we talked about. Probably a moment that they didn't realize, and I don't know if anyone else realizes it, but when you when you get the MP4, the DVD uh, from Smart Mark Video, uh, Crime Time gets a Please Come Back chant. And they didn't, since they don't do too many indies, they weren't, I don't think they understood what no, that they meant. They did not understand that it meant Please Come Back to AIW. So they, Shad, I believe, proceeds yeah. to cut a promo about how they are not going back to the WWE <laughs> at this time, uh, even though everyone wants them back at the WWE. Uh, it is a hilarious moment, I think. <laughs> like, I- I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I don't know if anyone else is catching this. But well, like, we all, I think even JTG actually caught it. <laughs> it's like, I'm sitting ringside and we kind of like looked at each other, made eye contact, and it was like this awkward moment, like, nah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't I was think like, he gets ah, it. Yeah. G- GTG definitely is like the headhunter two of the uh, right. crime time tag. Yeah, he's team. the headhunter Manny of the uh, crime uh, time relationship. It was fucking hilarious. Like <laughs> honestly, like I I hate to fucking bury him because they were like super super easy to deal with. But like when they when they thought that it was a <laughs> please come back to WWE thing, I was just like, holy shit! Like this is fucking it's another world. This is. So great, and I don't know if anyone else is picking up on this but me. Just, just got a shoot promo. Yeah, yeah and I was I just think like, the whole crowd did. Everybody was kind of confused. Like after he wrapped it up, everybody just got, oh, uh, okay, I guess we'll we just clap then. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that you know, so that was like probably one of my favorite things from the weekend outside of that. You know, little Guido, who of course is fucking amazing. Uh, you know, Tracy Smothers, we got him full Cubs gear. Well, and that's where I was going to say next, because well, when you find out that the headhunters are going to be super late and like, oh, shit, how do we stall? Well, oh, thank goodness well, Tracy Smothers is booked talk on a about, show. We were talking last episode about how depressed Cleveland was about the Cleveland Indians losing. And, right. Um, as soon as it, fucking game seven, as soon as the fucking Cubs got a lead, this fucking Biggins was on fucking Amazon. I, I, no, no, no. I didn't go to Amazon. Gringo Loco lives in Chicago. Right. And I saw on Facebook that he had checked in to Wrigley Field. And I, I immediately Facebook I have him and go, hey, man, buy whatever Cubs gear you can find for Tracy. I, I texted Tracy. I go, what size are you? And I immediately sent it to Gringo Loco. And we hadn't even, the finish hadn't even happened. Cleveland, in this Cleveland is going to kill us for this. <laughs> The finish hadn't even come down, you know, it was like a roller coaster. But I figured either way, either way, we could get a W flag and a T shirt and Tracy could wear it. And then I had to give tracks or go Cubs go. Right, the song, yes. That they, they sing when the Cubs win. And so yeah, they're it's a real song. So we like so we knew if we had to stretch, like, you know, we had Tracy, but going back to, you know, what we discussed, you know, a couple episodes ago is like Tracy always thinks that like he needs to work. He thinks he's like 1991 workhorse Tracy Smothers. Right. So like 
he doesn't want to cut the promos and everything. Like he's like he knows the team IOU guys. He thinks they're good. He sees them all the time, you know, on the Southern Circuit. So he's like ready, ready to go. He's ready to fucking work. And yeah. like he did like even, you know, people that don't like Tracy on the shows, like fans that come to live to the live shows, they were like, Holy shit, man, Tracy Smothers was fucking working his ass off. Yeah, like I think if you don't like the like the Tracy shtick, like the him and Grado or like him and Cliff Compton kind of stuff. Like this is a match that's totally different from that. Yeah. Like of course he does like the shtick at the beginning, but yeah. once the shtick was over, it was go time. From he was Chicago, like, Italy. Yeah, he was like bumping like a like a fucking madman. You know what I mean? And like he was because he really wanted to you know get the team IOU guys over because you know he, you know he really respects them and like you know he told us how good they are and how he wants to you know give them a you know a. a like kind of give back to them, you know what I mean, and do what he can to try to fucking establish them in AIW because they've hit a lot of the same parallel roads together and everything. Yeah, and that was their first uh, appearance at AIW. Yeah, yeah. And, and shout out to them; they're not no longer Team IOU. I think now that the was, Carnies. I think that was their final weekend. Maybe that was so that weekend. They, they, I mean, they had asked when you say Team IOU, can you also say the Carnies? Okay, no problem. So they were like. Segwaying into becoming the yeah. Carnies at that But point, shout out to those guys Totally awesome guys We had what three new tag teams We had EYFBO yep. Massage, Massage Envy, Envy And the and Carnies are Team IOU And Crime Time And fucking Crime the Headhunters Yeah Headhunters yeah. With many new tag teams Yeah like almost half the tournament was like you know New guys New people But like yeah Team IOU are the Carnies Just great dudes They were awesome all weekend uh, we they de- get- they definitely got into the fucking they definitely fit right into the after show activities and the partying. Uh, Team IOU was just kind of like just pounding the fucking drinks. Nick Higgy and Gary Awful were ready to roll. You almost dedicate your life to fucking making this thing work. That's like really n- not that significant, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Right. So it's like, oh, it's a it's a double shot weekend. I get to fucking hang out with all these guys that I'm friends with that I book. You know that. Uh, yeah, like business kind of goes out the window a little bit because so it's, it's like we could finally take our promoter, promoter A, promoter B hats off and like just relax. And I think I like to fucking party more than half the boys anyway. So like I really fucking oh, I had to get you off the bar. I was getting yelled at. Yeah, we'll talk you about spent that. 40 some dollars in a jukebox. That and lost all. Broke and didn't work. Uh, what about I don't, as we talk about new tag teams that came into this? Did you guys watch, and what did you think of this match between the twerk team of Marty Bell and Ray Lynn and oh, Massage that, Envy? I wonder which promoter A, promoter B. I wonder, I wonder which one pitched that one. That was my dream match. <laughs> that was also my dream match because, I mean, uh, spoiler alert, like, I we make a lot of money on YouTube by putting fucking really weird fucking clips up because I, th- I think porn is, like, illegal in, like, it, Arabian countries. So, like, we'll do, like... We'll do like fucking like a thousand dollars on some dumb clip, just like just just, just like uh, I mean, That's, it sounds bad, but like you know, like the more like almost perverted looking the clip is, like the the more chance it's gonna go okay. viral and like and like fucking. What like, are the Middle chances East. of TNA knockout Marty Bell? Laying on the ground with a masked man on her back, oiling her. What? What? What's the profit margin on that? I mean, it was that was basically like us booking a custom in front yeah, of a live crowd. I mean, that was a live action what custom. There, <laughs> we knew like that. This, you know, we had some really good wrestling book throughout the weekend, and we're, then you sometimes- and we're just like we're just like. Let's just make people real uncomfortable, man. What would happen if you had two girls that twerk and they have two guys that oil them down? Like, they, yeah, that are like it was just so fucking weird. Uh, and it's so funny because the one guy is just totally normal, and then there's just a creepy masked guy. Yeah, <laughs> and they wear full massage. Like, if you go to like a legitimate spa, they wear the schmocks, they wear like the jackets, like can, they oh, have it down. Can I, can I tell you a funny story about the about the mask guy? I think the oil master, <laughs> the, yes, the oil master, the oil master. <laughs> Man, these guys might get a full time job. Dorian Graves. Dorian, Dorian Graves. Graves. There you go. Dorian so Graves. Dorian yes. Graves is the mask guy. So, um, like a funny story, I've never told anybody about this incident because I was so embarrassed. So, after going to the bar with little Guido, the shows, you know, not started yet, but people like you know the talents rolling in and stuff. And a lot of people don't know that you know. Also, when 
Mount Carmel isn't a uh, you know a daycare or a school or anything else. They they also do AA meetings on Friday nights, so we get a lot of the AA <laughs> crowd, you know, like stumbling in and like some rough looking characters, uh, that kind of you know look like. They're like, where's the fucking meeting tonight? You know what I mean? I got to get my stamp on my fucking, you know, this is court ordered. So I'm kind of drunk coming from the fucking day with Guido and Lucky 13 and people are rolling in and I'm trying to get fucking, you know, trying to get my bearings and everything. And, you know, uh, this guy walks in and like never seen him before. And he just walks up and he does like the thing that like everybody does when they've never been around a wrestling ring. They just like pull on the bottom rope a little bit. <laughs> And I go, this fucking guy is an AA guy, and he is on the loose up here. <laughs> Just slipping into the wrestling. <laughs> like he's like on a he's on the loose up here, and he's trying to do some investigating. So I went to go have somebody fucking kick him out, and then next thing I know, fucking uh, VSK, the fucking oil master, is introducing himself to me, <laughs> and he's like, oh, you know, uh, this is uh, this is my partner. I thought he was an AA man. <laughs> that oh, was on the, 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 the fetish friendly Dorian Graves, yeah, yeah. by the way. The oil, the oil master. <laughs> the oil master and the fetish friendly. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, I thought the oil master was a fucking uh, escaped AA guy. He really basement. needs to do the oil master as a gimmick. <laughs> Which shout out to Kurt Hawkins. Uh, face the facts. He was trying to get us to book these guys for. Yeah, what, like a year. Yeah, they're there are his uh I guess his fucking prized students. Face the facts, uh the oil master. <laughs> yeah. In the realm of injuries and cancellations, we did also have that night um DJ Z, we kind of thought maybe this was gonna be a possibility. He was dealing with some injuries that he would not be able to go. So filling in for him on And night as one. you heard, what, two weeks ago, straight out of surgery, right on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. he was he was, Yeah. So I mean, uh we, we went to the uh to, to the trusty veteran of AIW, Flip Kendrick. <laughs> Which, man, what a negotiation, huh? Yeah. Hey, man, can you do the show? Yeah. <laughs> but he hadn't wrestled in a it, year. I think. Literally, almost like, a year. almost yeah. a year. It was just like he came to the uh, Gargano Farewell Show, and I love Flip Kendrick. Probably he is, like, one of the like most underrated, like, awesome dudes backstage. Like he, Definitely one of the funniest undercover. Yeah, like, oh, he's, like, yeah. he's, like he's undercover funny, just, like, dry sense of humor. He kind of... You know, once you start, like, he needed to take time off for a job and stuff, and, like, kind of, it's kind of like an out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. Like, you know, like, you just forget about people, and that's, you know, no offense to anybody. It's just, like, you know, the fucking train keeps kind of rolling, and you got to, yeah. you know. Sometimes, uh, like, dudes just have to be phased out, and then sometimes they get pitched as a submissive tag team. So, anyway, yeah, Flip was, like, he came to the Gargano Farewell Show, so it was just kind of, like, he was fresh in my mind, and I was like, oh, man, I love Flip. This would be... You know, and you know, working with the Lucha guys, like I thought that would be a good fit. You know, yeah, yeah. him and Laces have teamed before. Puerto Rican Powers from Lucha USA, Mark Which, Gingerick. Well, yeah, Marco Colleone. Remember, we called Kiwi to ask him what the deal with that was. Kiwi was almost my trainer. <laughs> Kiwi, Alan Funk, the Funkster. Still prank call him sometimes. <laughs> Poor guy. So we also obviously had uh, other highlights from night one. Were uh, the the Jollyville fuckets who who actually took on the weird world and I acknowledge this uh, I think last Good episode bounce. oh boy did he get bounced weird body just gets blasted halfway across the he ring is like and he, he's literally a, bounced he's off like the ropes rubber. back yeah he's like an action figure the middle part of the ring Good thing he got a job as a bouncer because <laughs> he, he could bounce he literally gets bounced uh, like a funny thing about the weird world is. Uh, so when they debuted at Fresh Meat, you know, they fucking, they were the only guys that merged up. They had t-shirts and they sold fucking everyone they had. They made so much money at, you know, their first booking, right? Yeah. And they never got more t-shirts. So they're like, oh, Double Dare, man. Fuck, we're going to merch up. You know, Double Dare. These guys <laughs> come with a full clothing line. Hoodies, <laughs> t-shirts, one of a kind printed t-shirts. These guys go all in, spend, they're the two poorest fucking guys I ever met in my life. They spend every dollar, right? Uh, to get all this merch, like they have so much merch, and uh, <laughs> but they were never in WWE like Crime Time. <laughs> they right. have they have so much merch, but I, they fail to realize that like, yeah, at Fresh Meat that was like all their friends and their family was there. They also and, like, sold like eighty tickets. Yeah. yeah, so like they sold T-shirts to them. Well, when they're there with like Crime Time and like Matthew Riddle <laughs> and like all these like top tier independent talents. Weird World ain't too high in the totem pole. They did not sell 
one t-shirt all weekend and like they were so fucking like bummed out so uh if you see the weird world pick up a t-shirt from those guys because they fucking spent every dollar they had to get that merch made i just saw a handwritten letter that johnny gargano picked up tonight uh begging begging tap out to buy their stock yeah what uh what about one of the craziest spots of the night too also in that match t money does the German suplex while they are in the Lake Erie Monster formation. Oh, that was Remember insane. that? Yeah. Yeah, and I just, T Money told me later, he just came up behind him, he goes, don't jump. And then he just fucking, like, I don't think, him. I don't that think they knew him. it was coming, dude. Like, <laughs> he just kind of put him in that rear waist lock and just whispered, don't jump. And like, he just fucking tossed those motherfuckers. T Money, T Money, uh, if you know him, is a very intense guy. Yeah, and he just goes, it ain't what you do. It's how you do it. And, like, that's it. That's the sentence. And, like, I just, <laughs> okay, Mr. T-Money. Well, and and then we had a couple other tag teams made up of individuals that have been at AIW but not together as tag teams. You had Crazy Pain, Steve Payne, and Gringo Loco. Well, they were kind of, like, they did that, you yeah, know, the six-man tag at, at right. Absolution. So they're kind of, kind yeah, of aligned yeah. with each other. Yeah. And then you also had Bro Sauce, which you just mentioned Matthew Riddle. And was well, they're associated in other Williams. and and other organizations. Right. We don't want to use anybody's copyrights, so we named them Bro Sauce. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to we don't want to catch any cases. So they also performed. I think the crowd that was there really enjoyed well, and, night and one. They, we were going to talk about the crowds, but definitely lighter draws than we wanted. You know, of course, every show we want a thousand people. Yeah, but. It's funny because a lot of Cleveland did not come out, and you know we talked about the reasons before. But sure. man, we had more people from out of town. We had people flying in all day. Uh, Papa Hales, the Papa Hales crew, yeah, uh, the one podcast from the south. We probably had, I would say, seventy percent were out of town people in the crowd versus like an all Cleveland crowd. It's very weird. So let's circle then all the way back to the headhunters. Circle the wagons. We got to come back to the headhunters. We go to the after party, and... Okay, so yeah, they get there, they paint it up, they do oh, this fucking oh, death I, match. I'm sorry, they, I forgot a moment of time when we, they were actually at the show. When they do show up, they're painted, and then they just light up and start smoking inside the locker room. Yeah, they, they didn't understand that you can't smoke in a school, but nobody was going to tell nobody them. Nobody was going to say no. They're just ripping cigs down in the locker room. Fucking Marlboro Lights just fucking letting it rip down there. All the way up to the uh, Traxler position. Yeah, they fucking... Oh, th- like, then their entrance music plays. Uh, they don't go up to the fucking entranceway after they, you know... No. ...had j- arrived. Like, their music is playing for what feels like five minutes. Duke goes down there. They're just sitting there. Duke goes, hey, your music's playing. He goes, oh, okay. Guy gets up, goes into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like I wonder what was happening because it literally played for what felt like three times. Yeah. yeah, as ring announcer Duke's giving me the keep going, keep going. I'm like, what do you want me? Is to it do? they're in the bathroom? They don't get. They don't give I a go shit. to Eric Ryan. Like Eric, you gotta. I mean, cut it. Start well, talking. Eric Ryan's more. not the guy to go to to cut fill more. time. I'm like, you gotta do something here, man. Eric Ryan's the guy that live on iPay pay per view. The Duke says, Eric, tell him because they were in the ring together as a heel <laughs> faction. And Eric Ryan goes, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> Yeah, he's not a hell of a promo. But poor Eric was still with he was teamed with the Lucky Thirteen, who had just woken up a half an hour ago, pounded a coffee. Yeah, Eric was probably like, I think this was his worst professional wrestling experience of all time. Uh, so then they finally come out, they do the match, uh, they get on the mic, they say Adam is a small company, and the guys they wrestled sucked or something, <laughs> uh, and they're gonna fucking okay. Wow. they just destroyed everything that they weren't supposed to because they don't care. They're just. Bleed it like they threw the blood everywhere. Like, like the highlight of the weekend is the headhunters thinking that they can cut promos and speak perfect English, and like they just resulted to go, "You're talking out your ass." <laughs> they did, but they also had the quote you of the weekend. You want to come back? Why don't you come on yourselves? And there it is. The headhunters literally telling the crowd to go come on themselves. And, well, and was- then after all that, this is on night two. After all that, they get the. Crime time esque, please come back chant. And they're <laughs> soaking it in. I go, man, this is like, this feels like a moment. And then, like, they're standing in the entranceway, and I'm like, this is a moment. And then, you know, it dies down, and fucking Headhunter A just goes, go fuck yourselves. And it just leaves. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, go. We get to the after party uh, at Nax Eatery and Drinkery, night one. Oh, a menu there. 
and the headhunters arrive and uh because you know we had like a students take them there we're trying to get as many people there as possible and the headhunters think that is an after party for them special appearance for them (laughs) they think this is an autograph signing so which which nax doesn't know wrestling nax just knows this is a thing that brings a hell of a lot of people in here and a lot of money and uh for some reason uh Hardcore professional wrestler extraordinaire Chewy Martinez is in the bar. And yeah, that was super weird. <laughs> and he tries he tries to uh, pitch some sort of angle to the fucking headhunters about wrestling somewhere. I don't know where this fucking guy came from, but uh, he's Chewy Martinez is in the so house. He just goes, "Is that the guy from Juggalo Wrestling over there?" I go, "I guess." The Necro Butcher's ride along, yeah. Chewy Martinez. He's in the Nax Eatery and Drinkery pitching fucking angles to him and the fucking uh, headhunters. So the headhunters, they think this is the headhunters autograph signing party. So they are fucking very professional. And then they go, hey, uh. Well, first off, a lady keeps coming up to me asking, are you John? And I go, no, but what can I help you with? She goes, I really need John. It's important. So I went and got Thorne, and then you can. Yeah. So then she goes, uh, these two gentlemen over here, they say they're not paying for their food. They said their food is all taken care of. <laughs> and, uh, they said it's part of their fee. They said it's part of them being here is uh, they get all the free food that they want. And uh, I just go, oh, hey, guys, you know, they go, hey, John, you, uh, we're here. You know, we're here for the for the appearance. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we need the you know, we need the food taken care of. So, yeah, like we're just like, fuck it. They made it. They got out of jail. We'll buy their fucking cheeseburgers and- for them. Let's be honest. Who is going to tell them no? <laughs> Not a single hey, person Steve, in that room. Hey Steve, go tell them <laughs> yeah. they can't have cheeseburgers. So no we picked up, we picked up we picked up the uh the tab on the cheeseburgers. The two cheeseburgers and an appetizer it platter. Made, it made them think that it was for their special appearance uh autograph signing at the next eatery and drink. Meanwhile, the only person that's talking to them is Chewy Martinez. Yeah, cuz everyone else just stayed far away oh, from them. Oh, nobody <laughs> wanted to go near them. <laughs> Except for Chewy Martinez who was there for some reason. And they just start smoking in a restaurant and we just kept the bar lady away from them. So, uh yeah, I mean, we could talk about this fucking after party for hours. I know that I got myself in a little bit of trouble in there. Uh from because somebody put Enter Sandman on the on the jukebox. The jukebox that every time you put money in it, it just shuts off. Yeah, <laughs> I've lost forty dollars in that fucking jukebox, man. You kept climbing on the chair trying to. Sandman oh, I saw the beer I, to people. I saw the Duke, and I said, "Duke, let me Sandman you this beer." And he goes, "What?" And I go, "Yo!" And I started trying to, I started trying to pour it down all over his face <laughs> like the fucking Sandman entrance, and he got scared. So one of the students. Trying to fucking get themselves over Josh, who got stuck with the headhunters. He he fully takes the Sandman beer to the face, uh, and then uh, you know, I guess I guess I kind of got thrown out of the Nax Eatery and Drinkery at the end of the night. Right. And I mean, uh, you know, we could talk about the fucking headhunters all day long, but I do feel like these two shows in ring were probably, uh, you know, two of our like kind of best of the year. I think they're the sleeper shows of, of 2016. They were crazy. For sure. They are. I mean, as we talk about the car night two. Had some amazing matches. You had Crazy Pain actually taking on Bro Sauce, and that match had like anything you could possibly want. In Man, a tag the fucking team Matthew Riddle match. busting out a little lucha. Yeah, it was fucking it was, it was crazy. And like and like pro wrestling, you see so many sick bumps, so many big moves, hardcore shit. You know, Eric Ryan taking a beal. Over the top rope through a barbed wire board right. was sick. And, like, I've seen every tournament of death, every uh, cage of death. That was just a disgusting thing. And then Steve Guy, you had to help cut him out of the barbed wire. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Guy, ring patrol. Yeah, that was, like, that thing, like, that board just disintegrated. Uh, that was fucking gross. Um, but, like, I, I think all the matches overachieved and overdelivered throughout the whole weekend, uh, you know, Maybe one wasn't great, but, like, they're all were fucking really, really good. And, like, you know, we preach every week on here about variety. And, like, you know, talking to Papa Hales, that was his big thing was he goes, you know, you guys weren't trying to be anything else but variety. There was lucha. There was hardcore. There was comedy. There was the oil master. (laughs) Yeah. And fucking. uh, So I guess I'll kind of wrap it up with this, you know. A few more uh, really funny headhunter stories. So they call me after I'm trying to finally fall asleep, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning. They call me and they said, John, we got a problem, brother. I said, you know, we didn't want to, you know, we couldn't get a hold of anybody last night. 
because they were calling us with they couldn't figure out how to put down a credit card for incidentals and all this stuff this was a horrible weekend for hotels anyway you know i fucking am ignoring the fucking headhunters you know i finally call them back because i know i got to deal with them at the show in a few hours and they said john brother they say brother a lot they go you know we got a problem they go they didn't have they ran out of double beds they go me and my brother we had to share a bed together. They only had one queen size bed, and we, I, I had to share. I, I had to share a bed with my brother, man. And uh, you know that's you know that's not cool, man. Then you know this is fucked up. You gotta you, you gotta fucking you know, like I don't have, we don't have a lot of room, man. You know, and like that's fucked up. You know, you gotta come take care of this, brother. And like I gotta fucking call the fucking hotel, and like I gotta tell her like, hey, I'm calling on behalf of the two large men. They were screaming in the lobby when they're on the phone with me. <laughs> So I got to get that all fucking handled for them. And then, you know, I finally get them settled. I get them out of the sharing the one bed together uh, from the night before. And then they call and they go, brother, we don't got no, uh, we don't got no transportation. We got to go. We want to go eat. We want to go. They've they, never heard of Uber. Yeah. And they had, they must have been on fucking Yelp or something. Cause they go, we want to go to the Fuji buffet. <laughs> Uh, they had this buffet all planned out where they wanted to go to. Uh, we had uh, student Josh go pick them up, take them to the Fuji buffet where they spent three and a half hours. Uh, they only they would never tell that never tell him uh, their real names. They only referred to each other as Headhunter A and B. Uh, <laughs> they told him uh, they would love to help him book La Parca uh, and, <laughs> and AIW. They said they could they could they could hook him up with La Parca. And various other Lucha Libre legends, uh, they turned into booking agents at the Fuji Buffet with 19-year-old student Josh. And then after all that, uh, they want to go to a gas station so they can get more food because they can't eat fast food because they say fast food is no good for their stomachs. So they want to go <laughs> a gas station. They want to go to a gas station to get food, but they only frequent and give their business to the 7-Eleven gas station. <laughs> That's like Grado. Grado loves Seven Eleven. Sponsorship deal. They would only go to Seven Eleven. So Josh, because fast food is bad for your stomach, but the fucking roller dogs are perfectly fine. Yeah. So Josh said that he had to drive around and he had to find a Seven Eleven gas station because that is the only place that they would accept food from. Uh, and they loaded up on food from there, and then uh, they came to the show. And uh, I guess that is probably our weekend with uh, Double Dare and the Headhunters. And yeah. This is kind of a long episode. I I hope people... Uh, Check out Double Dare. Get it on DVD. I hope people uh, even get into the Headhunters trying to sabotage each other. All right, unfortunately, I have one more Headhunter story because Biggins, <laughs> Biggins reminded me, and I, I, I would just... <laughs> I would feel awful if the world didn't hear this. This is a good closer, so we'll close with this one. I, I guess we'll close on this story of this extra long uh, edition of uh, the Card is Going to Change podcast. So night two, you know, the headhunters work out, you know, uh, they're going to get eliminated. You know, we somehow talked them into doing two matches. It was went fine because they wanted to make it, make it up to us for being in jail. Uh, so headhunter A goes, hey, John. I talked to you out in the hallway oh, geez. while his brother's painting up, you know? <laughs> and he goes, hey, what's up, brother? I said, no, what's up, man? You haven't, you know, everything doing all right? He goes, yeah, man, this is great. Love your promotion, man. He goes, hey, is your heavyweight champion here? I said, no, uh, you know, he's actually not here this week. He goes, oh, man, fuck. He goes, because I was going to say I would love to do an angle with him, and then you bring me back without my brother, and uh, I go for your heavyweight championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> so he's cutting his brother's throat. While he's painting his face up in the other room. And this is the one who was in jail, yes, actually. Yes, And uh, he goes, I'd love to come back. I'd do, uh, do an angle with your heavyweight champion. I'd lo- I, I love to do that. He goes, you know, I'd love you bring me back, uh, you know, on my own. without you Skip know, Skipping right over the intense division. He's going right to the main. <laughs> without my brother. Uh, so that, uh, I guess that was our weekend with the Headhunters. I would encourage people to book them. Uh just because it is experience, it is a life experience like none other. And if you need to book them, you know, I'll, I'll give you their numbers and they'll call you about a hundred fucking times. That, that's gonna do it here for this edition of AIW's. The card is going to change again. Check everything out on Smart Mark Video. Uh, check us out AIWrestling.com for all sorts of future dates and shows, and also shop. AIWrestling. Dot com for all the good merch and follow us on Twitter. And I'm not going to say thanks because Thorne doesn't like it, so I'll end with this. Hashtag oil master.
Thanks.